This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Engine Inspection presents Going Ultra. I'm wrapping up Ultraman Z. This is episode 24, the penultimate episode. It was originally aired on December 12, 2020. It's called The Game to Extinction. The director is Kiyotaka Taguchi, and the writer is credited posthumously as Koto Fukihara. And I like this episode a lot. We get some interesting revelations about what exactly is going on. Celebro finally shows up, really speaks his mind, lets us know what he's doing, uh, where he's going, what his plans are, and basically his deal is that he uh, goes from planet to planet like locusts, using up their resources. Oh, no, no, sorry, wrong wrong, uh, wrong story. Um, he goes from planet to planet manipulating things and manipulating the sentience there so that they become so overwhelmed with fear, fear of the unknown, fear of destruction, fear of monsters of unknown origin, really, that they will produce weapons that are too much for them to handle, that they lack the maturity to handle, and then they, and then I guess at the end he uses that weapon, you know, the weapon or weapon systems that they've created that are too much for them in order, and he, he seizes them for himself and then destroys all life on that planet, and, uh, yeah, he calls it the extinction game or something like that, which is, uh, pretty, pretty bad. So that's, uh, that's kind of crazy. It all makes sense now what he's been doing and what's been going on. And at the same time, it just makes it a little bit weirder. <laughs> and while I like the sentiment of it, I still have a little bit of a, of an issue with what exactly that means. And like the fact that there's this amazing monster form, Destrudos, uh, who comes out of Ultroid Zero, I guess, or that Ultroid Zero transforms into after absorbing essence of a bunch of kaiju. Um, like, that's kind of weird to me. And then, uh, I mean, he does use the D4 ray at the end through, uh, it's the thumbnail picture. Um, at the end, he does fire off the D4 ray and say something about, like, oh, now I'm going to use the weapon that you and your people made to destroy you. Ha 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 ha. So, I mean, I guess that, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I get that. Um, but it's just, it's weird. Like, it's a very... To me, it's a very out of left field type of thing. Uh, I kind of like it better than world domination. I, you know, this world destruction and like this serial thing, kind of like uh, a certain other bad guy from Comrade Build, uh, who I won't talk about. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know, like, it doesn't, it kind of doesn't, kind of doesn't make sense. Like, he's a parasite, basically, Celebro. And what do parasites do? They destroy their hosts. So it's very much in keeping with, like, the design of that kaiju and stuff. But uh, I don't know, it's interesting. I really like the uh, actress who plays uh, Yoko. Her performances, being unhinged here, are fabulous. Uh, the guy who plays Wajima from Wizard. The guy who plays the director here, Kurt Kiriyama, I believe. Uh, his performances are great. Uh, I love both of them hamming it up. She seems like, he seems like a, I don't know, like a sick dude who's gross and enjoying being bad. And she seems like an unhinged killer. So it's like, two different flavors of crazy and uh, I appreciate that and uh, just both their performances were cool so so that was neat uh, it was such a gut punch oops it was such a gut punch when Ultroid Zero started going after Red King and then tried to get Red King's egg and then Zet came in there and saved little baby Red King and stuff uh, Yoko or sorry Yuka talking about how the planet is an organism and the kaiju are like part of that organism the super organism uh Again, that's interesting, but this that hadn't been shown throughout the show. Showed? Shown. That hadn't been shown throughout the show. So, I don't know. I kind of don't buy it. It kind of falls flat for me. And, like, um, Hibikura made, like, a, oh, is this because of global warming comment earlier? And Yuka was like, no, it's not because of global warming. And I don't know what that was about. Uh, I think the planet can... Well, anyway. I think we're going to be okay. Although I do want more people doing regenerative agriculture and growing their own food in a smaller, more sustainable, decentralized way. So, anyway, I don't know, that makes me crazy, but, um, yeah, I think there's definitely a better way we can do things, and I'm all for stewardship of the earth. And, uh, anyway, but, like, I don't know, like, so, the show seemed to dismiss global warming through the person of Yuka, who then is now saying, oh yeah, these kaiju are, you know, intimately tied in with the ecosystem of the planet, and they 
can't handle Ultroid Zero because of his power and the T4 ray and all that stuff. And so, therefore, we need to take this thing offline because it's detrimental to the overall health of the planet. So, I don't know. Like, that's kind of a contradictory message. Like, either don't mention uh, climate change or global warming at all, or uh, that way you're not, like, muddling things when you come to this you know, man-made, so to speak, weapon. It's, you know, stolen your pool technology instead. But regardless, um, you're, like, kind of running up against the same concept that, like, something about the progression of humanity's technology is causing deleterious effects that cannot be well that can only be counteracted by uh abstinence or cessation of certain practices versus like creating new better technology or systems that will help make that work like if the d4 ray were the engine if the d4 thing like so, like, all I know is Ultra Zero doesn't seem to have any battery packs or whatever. Is that because the D4 Ray? I don't know. They don't explain that. And uh, I believe... Yeah, they, they never show it, as far as I know, having any sort of cabling on it. And that's interesting. Because they don't talk about the S2 engine or anything like that in it. Absolutely. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. It does get the uh, Belial Atrocious metal thrown into it. And that seems to maybe be the thing that powers it when the director takes it, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So, that's kind of odd. Like, it's funny, like, I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. It was very exciting. Uh, I love, like, the revelation of Hebikura being, you know, Jugglers Juggler and how he apparently cut down a gigantic tree to stop a war. What the, uh, <laughs> what the ultra is that about? I don't know. Uh, but it makes me compelled to, like, see this guy show. And this is going to be a weird comment, but... That man looks fabulous in his juggler suit with the helmet off. Um, like, I don't know if they did his hair differently or, like, if his skin was looking extra good that day or what. But he looked so fabulous in that. And I thought, like, man, this guy's awesome. This guy's so cool. I want to be just like him when I grow up. Oh, never mind. I already didn't tell him. So. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, I've, I like I want to hang out with that guy. Hey, because sometimes he looks funny or, like, a goofy guy. Uh, but, like, there he looked super cool. So, I don't know if it was just because he was being bad or, like, he shifted out of his... Uh, Hibakura persona into his juggler persona or what but I was like I want to be on that guy's team I want to be on that guy's side I like him oh wait he's a complicated possible villain so he's a possible villain you know Hibakura apparently or juggler has been working towards this whole time finding out what's going on and taking the opportunity where he can it wasn't that he planned on stealing an ultimate weapon from humans on earth and that's why he joined well maybe that was why he joined Storch hey humans are making these great weapons if I can get my hands on one of these, then I can prove to whoever he's talking about from a previous show that, you know, we, whoever we are, what kind of class of people we are, we can do this. I have no idea what he's talking about, but I find it very compelling. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it again, it does make sense that that's what he was trying to do the whole time, work with storage so he can steal an ultimate weapon or a super powerful weapon for, you know, his own ends. And when, like now, it makes sense that he had... Uh, Ultraman hit the King Joe or whatever that was previously with the Zestium beam so that the data could be collected so that Ultroid Zero could be completed and the D4 uh, weapon system could be used successfully and safely by Ultroid Zero so it could be powered so that it would become the ultimate weapon so that he could then take it which is super interesting again super complicated uh, very fun uh, another couple random fun things. I love Ultra Zero crawling up out of the fourth gate, like up the fourth gate shaft and bursting out of there. That was super cool. And then the fact that he's rampaging all over the world to take stuff is uh, is pretty fabulous. So I really like that. Um, yeah, I got really strong Evangelion vibes. Like that was one of them. Uh, and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, this episode was... Uh, again, a lot of fun. Like, I, I love the peak drama. I love the fact that Yoko's trapped in there, that Haruki's, like, desperate to rescue her, but he can't, and all the drama that that's creating. I've already mentioned G Gundam once. I'll mention it again. I get a little, uh, little bit of a G Gundam vibe, too, with the, you know, the girl being uh, trapped inside of this great monster that our hero's got to defeat in order to save her, which I know is, like, basically the princess in the castle held by the dragon or the black knight or, you know, whatever, but... It also happened in G Gundam in an interesting way, and it feels slightly like that uh, here as well, which I think is, like I said, good and fun, because I like G Gundam a lot. 
and I like everything that's going on here. So I'm sure I missed some big points. Uh, why don't you tell me what I missed and things I should have talked about that I didn't in the comments. Uh, and yeah, until next time, folks, take care. This is MJ signing out. I hope you enjoyed that. Go to mjmunoz.com to leave any questions, comments, or other feedback you might have. There you can find all of my analysis, art, and fiction. I cover books, tokusatsu, comic books, anime, and more. Look around. You're sure to find something else that you'll enjoy as well. This has been a Story Over Everything production.